Dave Tobe, the current special teams coach of the Kansas City Chiefs, joins us on the Grossinger Auto Group hotline. Find over 5,000 vehicles every day at Grossinger.com. How you been, Dave? I'm doing great. How you guys doing? We're good. We're good. One of your former pupils, Devin Hester, calls it a career, and we've been talking about it today, the moments that he gave us, and I think he should be a surefire Hall of Famer. Why don't special teams guys get into the Hall of Fame more often? <laughs> I agree. I agree, and I, I think he he definitely deserves it. And, and five years from now, we got to do everything we can to get him in there. Well, I also think too, it's a reminder of just how electrifying a kickoff return can be. And yet, as we're seeing in the league right now, there are very few of them. And when they come out, often the guys bringing it out from eight yards deep or six yards deep or out to the twenty-five. It's it is a play that also we know has a high correlation with injury risk. So we may see less and less of that play, and it's less and less likely that there's ever going to be someone like Devin again. Do you agree? I agree, and and I'm not sure, you know, even if they didn't change the rule the way they did, that there ever would be anybody as good as him. He, he is that good. He was that good in his day. When did you know? Like, what practice or what moment, what time in camp? <clears throat> and I and I know that that in talking to Greg Gabriel about it and the scouting and the desire that the Bears had to get him, they always knew he could do this. But did you? At, at what point did you say, oh, I've never seen anything like this before in my life? I mean, I saw it in college watching the tape. I mean, we, you, you see the talent that he had. I mean, really, a lot of credit goes to Greg Gabriel and, and Jerry Angelo and Lovey Smith for pulling the trigger on him as early as they did in the second round. I mean, that was that was kind of unheard of back then. Uh, you know, to take a guy that really was primarily a, a returner, kick returner, really didn't play a position. You know, they stuck their neck out there and, and took him in the second round and, and, and really kind of shocked the league at first. Uh, until probably about after the second return for a touchdown, then everybody started jumping on a bandwagon and said that they loved him too. So uh, that's the way it went. I mean, those guys did a good job to get him in there. Dave, we're going to put you on hold real quick. Your line's a little bit choppy. See if we can clear that up with our producer, Brendan McCaffrey, on the other side of the glass. Looking forward to talking to him about because he mentioned the tape. And we always hear – Defensive guy stumping for a guy, offensive guy stumping for a guy. But when you see someone truly special or a guy that you think you need where it's like, okay, I know this guy isn't a, a highly touted wide receiver or linebacker, but look at the way he gets downfield. I mm-hmm. want to talk to him about converting speed to power, which you have to identify as a special teams coach. Sure. And, and you know, the, the, different, uh, the different attitudes that you have to adjust to offensively and defensively, which I think would make him a great coach. Yeah, we also know, too, that it's a special teams coach is going gonna, is gonna to go to bat for a guy like Devin Hester mm-hmm. and say, look, I don't care where if he's a cornerback. Right. I don't care if he's a wide receiver. You call him whatever you want to call him. Just make him available for my special team. What, what, right. When did you what, – what other than speed, when we talk about his talents and his attributes, what did Devin Hester have that separated him other than the top-notch speed? Sorry, hold, hold on one second. Hold, I mean, I can't talk right now. Hold on. Is he talking to us or is he talking to someone on the other line? Did we? <laughs> what just what happened? What is that? <laughs> this is going crazy. <laughs> Dude, I'm done talking to football, guys. Every time something – it's always my question. <laughs> it's Dan's introductions, <laughs> and then it's my question. What? Is there a fire in Kansas City? Like, we're just – I told him he... to hang up when the black guy asked the question. <laughs> well, of course. As, as does everybody, pretty much. <laughs> There's so I, many I'm, of us. I'm not allowed to talk right, <laughs> right now. Right, right. He told me not to talk to you. What? What the – I thought he was talking to somebody, like, I thought he had the other phone. Yes, I thought he was saying to someone else, like, I'm doing a radio interview. He was right talking now. to us? He can't talk right Did Dave now? just get fired? Like, what? Wait. That is the oddest. I'm sorry. Was, I'm he, not, was he pulled over I'm not going to pretend like that's regular that's radio. That's never just happened like, before. I'm just, I Did the talk. Miami offensive line coach just walk into the room? Like, what? <laughs> what? You know, just you know, sometimes you. I've never experienced anything like that in my life. I'm stumped right now. Mm-hmm. Is Dave okay? Did did the did the did the, did the creepy people take Dave? Dave all right, is everything all right, Dave? 
I'm, I'm good now. We, okay. I th- we thought maybe you just got. You got to remember, I'm in my office at work. Okay. Yeah, no. I, I thought maybe you just got axed or something and you had to get off the phone. Or... <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. We'll get back to the interview now. Uh, other than yeah. top uh, top end speed, were there any other attributes or talents that, that, that separated Devin Hester from the yeah. regular returners? Yeah, I mean, it's something, something that a lot of people don't realize how, how strong he was. I mean, he would break a lot of tackles that, you know, a lot of guys would go down, like arm tackle would just bring the other guys down. He would run through it. You know, that's something that, uh, you know, really um, people didn't really realize as much. You know, the, the speed was kind of – everybody saw that. But the strength and then the vision that he had, the, the, the vision that he anticipated, you know, the, the coverage, where it was coming from and, and where to cut, and just the timing of the cuts too is, is something that was just – uh, nobody else did what he did. How many plays did you guys have? Because every time we watched, it was like, oh, look, De- Devin just reversed field and he's taken off. But yeah. how, how many things, because Pat Manley has talked about what you guys studied and the weaknesses in other teams, but how many things did you have to install on a week-to-week basis uh, to capitalize on his talents? No, we usually, you know, we usually went into every game. We, we had like about three or four special returns, you know, just designed for him. We thought that, uh, you know, would, would uh, you know, get, get a team, you know, in particular weeks. So, uh, but the thing is, you got to get the ball kicked to you, and you got to have those situations where you know he, he took advantage of it, and and he did. I mean, there was a lot of times where he got big returns, you know, not necessarily a touchdown, but he was he was setting field position up for us every game. We were just hearing from John Fox talking about special teams coaches and opportunities, and I remember talking to you years ago and making the point that a special teams coach has to work with everybody. Unlike just the defensive side or just the offensive side, you have to find a way to incorporate everybody on that roster into something of value, be it blocking or tackling or a specialty role. Why do you think that that particular truth isn't – accepted more when it comes to head coaching candidacies? Uh, I just think it just hasn't been done. You know, it, it's, it's, it's such a rare thing. You know, uh, Harbaugh did it, but he actually got out of special teams, uh, you know, for a year before he got the job. Mm-hmm. And, you know, not, not too many guys go directly from special teams. I mean, that's, you know, I know uh, Frank Gans did it. Uh, didn't have a lot of success with it, but – uh, I just think it's just not accepted yet. You know, until somebody does it and has, you know, has great success with it, uh, will, it will it be a normal thing? We know you're concentrating on the Kansas City Chiefs season, but do you want to be a head coach one day? I do. You know, that's something that I, you know, I, I obviously, you know, over the you know, last four or five years, uh, you know, the talk about it, and I've done some interviews where, you know, it's something that I might want to do for sure. When you've done the interviews, what kind of what has been encouraging? What has been discouraging through that? Had now having gone through that, saying, "Okay, I've experienced this. I'm a little more prepared for it." And that every time you do it, you know you can get a little better. Yeah, I mean that's that's how it is. And then you know, I think the whole public uh, perception, I think, is changing. You know, of, of a special teams coach. You know, I think people are, are coming around to the idea. Hey, you know. It does make a lot of sense that that this guy does coach everybody on the team, and he's up in front of the team every every day, you know, giving them a, a motivational speech or uh, you know telling them exactly what they want to do in each position. You know, you coach O line, D line, everybody. You know, the offense, defense, DBs, running backs, everybody. You know, every day. So uh, it's something that uh, I think just the, the public knowledge uh, is, is coming around a lot more. Than See, it has been in the past. now I think I know what happened. I just, I'm doing some some forensic detective work here. So you're on the phone in your office. Andy Reid is walking by. Mm. Andy Reid says, wait a second, Tobe's on the phone. Who is he talking to? And <laughs> it's the it, Chicago yeah, number on the call. Right. Yeah, he sees a 312 yeah. number on yep. there, and he thinks, well, here it goes. Here's the start of it. He's get been off. telling me he wanted to go back to the yeah, Bears. Get, yeah, get off the phone and we'll start working on your game plan for next week, Tobe. That's what happened. Believe me, this this phone call doesn't happen unless they get it cleared by Coach Reed. So uh, we, we were supposed to talk about Devin Hester, not me. <laughs> okay. So yeah, let's, let's get back. Let's get back to Devin Hester. Ah, we're done with Devin Hester. <laughs> 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 no, we're we're finished here. No, 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 no we're not going to do that. Uh, it, when when you look at the way you mentioned the rules, how it's it's affected special teams and how the kickoffs have been pushed forward a little bit yeah. and is taking the game out of it. And that, now you're seeing guys kick the ball short. Uh, is the can the, can the NFL or coaches game the system and make it so that, hey, we it doesn't matter what you do to the rules, the kickoff will always be an important part of the game? 
I think the kickoff will. I don't. I don't think the kickoff is going to go away at all. I really don't. I don't know how you can take it away, especially the end game situations with onside kicks. And I mean, what are you going to do? Just take those away? You can't. So you, you got to keep the kickoff uh, in the game. Uh, otherwise, it wouldn't be the same. You mentioned uh, you mentioned that you've been ahead. you mentioned that you've been in, in in previous interview situations before, and I always find it hilarious when guys say, "Yeah, we met for eight or nine hours. We had a really good meeting. We had breakfast and lunch. What can possibly be talked about for an entire day when it comes to what you're going to do on third downs or how you're going to put your staff together? Like, how many scenarios do you have to go over and be ready for when you're in that interview situation? Well, it's it's you know it's it really is pretty thorough, uh, and you'd be surprised how time flies. Uh, you know, you, you, there, there's a lot of detail to being a head coach, a lot of detail. And uh, do they ask you about when, staff you know, during, or during or scheme? Oh yeah, yeah. Staff is important. Staff is huge. You know, especially for a special teams coach, you got to know who your offensive coordinator is going to be, defensive coordinator, and what your philosophy is, and how you're going to attack teams, and how you're going to motivate and. Uh, you know how you're going to handle uh, a discipline discipline situations. I mean, everything everything matters, and, and they ask every question, and and they leave no stone unturned. They want to know exactly what they're getting. How about Devin questions? How about that? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we're up against the yeah, clock, so a- we're done now. Asked and answered, and appreciate as always your time and your candor, yeah. and uh, wish you the best of luck with the remainder of the chief season and uh, with whatever it. may be uh, in your future professionally. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it, man. And, hey, hey, let's get him in the Hall of Fame because he definitely deserves it. We'll do our best. Thank you, Dave. Okay. All right. Take care. <laughs> I, that's what that's, happened. That's what happened. Think, I guarantee you Andy walked in. Somebody. It, you, you, don't act, you think it was Andy? Yes. You don't act you like that. So? It's not your boss. <laughs> <laughs> you totally would. Because Andy's probably listening. He's no, like he's stand, not, she's probably standing he's, outside. He's, he's having a bowl of pasta with Chris Boss. I mean, throw a handful of M and M's at me. <laughs> See, <laughs> I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to go. I just there. imagine you all. You always have a bowl of M and M's at the ready. Oh, Andy's coming. <laughs> right.